Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking the Doctor Who episode, The Zygon Invasion Part 1. And this is another episode that just really did not click for me. I mean, there were some nice moments in it, but you ever have those episodes of a show, even a show you like, where you're just kind of like, man, I really wish this episode would end just so I could go and do other stuff. Like, seriously, I, I was watching this episode, and I was kind of, like, just looking forward to it being over so I could go play Civilization Beyond Earth. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, let's just kind of get right into it, and let's kind of get into the positive side of things. Uh, now, if you're talking Doctor Who Easter eggs, this episode uh, had some nice ones. Um, somebody mentioned they spotted a picture of the first Doctor in uh, the unit base. Uh, we see Osgood. She's like a giant reference to previous Doctors all over the place. She's wearing the uh, the Seventh Doctor's jumper. She even ta they even have a little conversation about how um, the previous Doctors four, five, six, and six uh, would wear the uh, little have little question marks uh, on their collars. And then uh, Peter Capaldi's Doctor mentions like, oh well, uh, you know, I'm wearing question mark underpants. And I, I, as cheesy as it was, that was one of the things about sort of the 80s era of Doctor Who with them sort of playing the question mark up is almost sort of like the Doctor's logo in a lot of ways. I personally liked that. I suppose a lot of that comes just from me being a big fan of superheroes and, you know, superheroes very often have a symbol that, that sort of stands for them. And this sort of red, the idea of this sort of red question mark standing for the doctor, I, I thought that was cool. I really liked that. In fact, um, I was, um, saw that, uh, like Peter Capaldi and Stephen Moffat in the interviews about the episode had even kind of said that Osgood is, as, as we've already figured out long ago, just kind of a giant stand in for the Doctor Who fandom in general. And that's all well and good. It's just, for me, Osgood is. Osgood is cool, but she's one of those characters that's good in small doses. Here, trying to push her to the forefront, it didn't really quite work for me. And, um, well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that really was kind of one of the big gripes I had with this episode. The other one was that just a lot of the people in this episode were dumb. I mean, like, were those soldiers just taking stupid pills? It's like, Seriously, guy, that you're this late. This you know there are shape shifting aliens around, and here's your mother who cannot, or who, something claiming to be your mother who cannot answer the most basic questions about your life. So you guys are all gonna go into the church, holster your weapons, and then go into the church without even bothering to asking them like, well, why can't you just go and bring whatever this proof is out here? And then of course they're immediately killed. And Kate Stewart goes off to that. To New Mexico, and if uh, you're not from the U.S., uh, truth or consequences, New Mexico is a real place, and it's just like Clara said. The town changed its name to the name of a game show, Truth or Consequences, back in the 50s as a publicity stunt. In fact, today it's actually kind of a little bit of a resort town because it's one of those places here in America that actually has hot springs. So it's kind of a little bit of a town, about six, 7,000 people, that's a uh, Kind of where people with money go on, you know, fancy spa vacations. Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess, having never been there, that it doesn't look very much like uh, the way it was portrayed here on Doctor Who. Uh, just sort of, particularly that bit where you see the sign that says "No dogs" and then somebody scrolled "No scrawled No British" on there as well. Uh, this is a little bit of a reference to the olden days in Hong Kong when it was controlled by the British. And public parks would have signs up that said, no dogs or Chinese allowed. Yeah. And uh, we, we can definitely, I think, uh, add this episode to the big pile of Doctor Who portrays America in an extraordinarily unflattering light. I mean, a town called Mercy really, to me, is kind of the highlight of, of portrayals of the actual United States and Americans on Doctor Who. And, you know, I'm sorry, Jack Harkness does not count as he was not actually from America. He was from a planet in space in the future where people just happen to talk like Americans. So, yeah. And incidentally, I would like to remind folks that Sherlock is seriously guilty of this as well. I mean, really? 
Okay, well, we're, we're just going to leave it at that. So, um, kind of, uh, just kind of going back to some of the other things about this episode I didn't like. Um, oh, okay, to give, to give Doctor Who points, somebody actually did do some research on New Mexico on the show, because you can kind of see that they um, did have uh, part of the um, circle with two lines coming out of it at northeast, south, and west. That's part of uh, the New Mexico state flag. So somebody at Doctor Who actually did do a little bit of research on New Mexico, and um, when I saw that in the police station before they specifically mentioned that Osgood was in New Mexico, I was able to go like, oh, hey, she's she's an American. She must be in New Mexico. But, um, okay, I, I know far too much about things like state flags and stuff just because of being an enormous geography nerd. But, you know, uh, that was a nice touch. But anyway, getting back to my uh, rather notable list of complaints about this episode, well, while I am kind of have mixed feelings about Osgood, I just flat out don't like Kate Stewart. She's really all the more negative aspects of her father without some of without the cool stuff that you sort of that made you really like the brigadier. You know, yeah, he could be a little um too military in his thinking at times, but you know, he was not an unreasonable person. Kate's solution tends to be again, kind of like her dad, just like, okay, let's blow it up. Let's cover this up. You know, let's go on and on about how great the UK is. You know, I still think back to that episode where they go like, um, they're, they're talking about something like, um, yeah, we can't let the Americans know about this. You've seen how their movies are. And uh, <laughs> I always found that to be extraordinarily, pretty kind of extraordinary coming from Doctor Who, where every single frickin' time the aliens invade, okay, okay, like 95% of the time when the aliens attack Earth, they decide they want to start with the UK first. I mean, pot, kettle, black. I mean, it's sort of the same with anime and manga, where the aliens and everything in the universe happens in Tokyo. I mean, this is just sort of a part of the nature of storytelling. Yes, people are probably going to set stories in their own countries, and that's just kind of how it goes. But, again, pot kettle black, Doctor Who. Okay, pot kettle black. Alright, so I think that's uh, enough time to... Uh, I think that's a good point to sort of leave the nationalism aside and just kind of get back to what's going on in this episode. Um, like, the whole idea here at the end of it all is... The Zygons have basically successfully replaced the entire population of the UK, which kind of had me scratching. I was like, wait a minute, the entire population of the UK is only 20 million? Seriously? Though, I, I do keep in mind that being from the US, the only two countries in the world that have more people than us are India and China. So, to us, 20 million is actually a nice chunk of change, but here in the US, our population is currently hovering at about 316 million. So, yeah. And if, uh, because uh, one thing I've noticed is that foreign people seem to have a really poor understanding of just how large the United States is, you could fit England, not the UK, but England itself, several times over into Southern California. Okay? America is a big goddamn country. <laughs> I'd also really be curious to know as to just how in the world did the paperwork on all of this work? Uh, like, where, 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 where's the like documentation of all these people? And why in the world would you send a whole horde of these uh, British people, quote unquote, to a single small town where a gigantic influx of foreign people is really, really gonna stand out? Why not just sort of group these guys into families? I mean, presumably that's sort of how it worked, and sort of send like one or two families here, one or two families there. You know, like a dozen British people turning up in a small town? Well, that's going to raise an eyebrow here or there, but people are just going to assimilate it to it very quickly. If you have dozens of British people turning up in a small town in New Mexico, a lot of people are going to be like, what the hell? I mean, it, you know, I'm just going to flat out say it. Whoever wrote this episode should be ashamed of themselves. The amount of stupidity in the storyline is staggering. 
I mean really truly staggering. And that's not even getting into the why the hell is the doctor taking an airplane when he has a TARDIS? I mean, the the twist with Clara at the end wasn't a huge surprise. I mean, yes, it's nice to see Jenna Coleman going out there and playing or her playing evil. That's fun, but there's no real stakes to is the doctor gonna get killed by that missile? Well, no, of course we know that's not gonna happen because he's the protagonist. But still, it just sort of feels like Seriously, you think the Doctor can't find a way out of that situation? The Doctor can find a way out of that situation in his sleep. And, you know, there I mean, there's other things, like the sort of like the Doctor ranting at the two little girls, and then it turns out like, oh yeah, it turns out they really are aliens. Well, that was either that was going to happen or the Doctor was going to be mistaken for a pedophile. So, Doctor Who being a family show, pretty safe to say which way that was going to go. And, okay, yes, it's kind of cool to see Peter Capaldi playing Amazing Grace on a guitar, but, okay, I get it already. The, the, the 12th Doctor likes to chill by playing the guitar. Okay, I, I don't need to see this happen again and again and again. I mean, this has happened like almost every episode this season, or at least in the majority of episodes. Like, okay, it's a character thing with this Doctor. I get it. And, you know what? That's that's really all I have to say about this episode. This was, on a lot of levels, an extraordinarily disappointing episode. Now, there were some funny, some nice Doctor Who Easter eggs. The Zygon costumes looked really good. Um, and there's certainly nothing to complain about from Peter Capaldi or Jenna Coleman's performance. Uh, but again, just the ridiculousness of this plot. I mean, I don't think I've wanted to make the Angels Take Manhattan. Now, that was the one where they got rid of Amy and Rory, right? Uh, this actually tops that in sheer, I want to go beat my head against the wall in terms of just how stupid what they have going on in this episode is. I mean, I'm actually somewhat disappointed that as a reviewer I have to sit around and watch the sequel to this episode next week just because I have this utterly convinced it's going to be a complete and utter piece of junk so with that said I'm going to wrap it up here uh, as always please comment rate and subscribe and of course you can follow me on twitter at Hoosier Jedi until next time take care and have a good one